Thank you. All right. Um, next, it's a song ministration by Miss Aretha Anderson. blessing to see such a wonderful day to see two made as one and it just goes to show we can all agree that this day wouldn't have happened if our God wasn't still here with us amen, amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. who told the sun where to stand in the morning You can only come this far And who told the moon Where to hide till evening Whose words alone can catch a falling
Hallelujah. So, you know, I've always believed that I can sing like that. In my head and in my heart, I believe I can sing like that. Hallelujah. How many of you know that your Redeemer lives? Hallelujah. Amen. Indeed, our Redeemer lives. And it gives me great pleasure and joy to welcome you today into the house of God. You're welcome to Living Springs International Church. Hallelujah. Can I, can I have a better? Your amen is a top up. Can I have a better amen? Hallelujah. Amen. amen. I trust that you'll be blessed today. And we thank you so much for taking time to be here for Yao and for Cynthia. I also want to say a big thank you to the parents for traveling all across the ocean to be here. Put your hands together for your parents. And also for the wonderful work that you have done in raising up such a wonderful young man and such a beautiful woman. Yao indeed is a son of the house and he works really very hard in this house. Hallelujah. He, he is in our Austin department and he's a good man. My memories of him is of one day when we had a ceremony in this house and after everybody was gone, he had stayed behind, emptied bags, cleaned the place up, hoovered the hall. And that tells me that Cynthia, you are blessed to have him for a husband. The same also goes for Cynthia. She doesn't say much. You hardly ever hear a word from her. But she is indeed a woman of virtue. Hallelujah. And I know that Yao, Cynthia will make you a very happy bride. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, the Bible says that to everything there is a season and there is a time for every purpose on this side of heaven. And the Bible says again in verse 11 of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 that in its time or in his time, God has made everything so beautiful. He has made all things beautiful in its time. And I believe that today God ordained for you and I to be here to be witnesses to this wonderful ceremony and to glorify his name for his kindness and his goodness in our lives. Can I hear you say amen? amen. You will agree with me that all human institutions and societies are sustained by principles. A breakdown in those principles will inevitably lead to chaos and disorder, indeed to anarchy. The Bible says in Psalm 11 verse 3 that if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? It means that for the righteous, there are also principles for us to abide by. Marriage cannot be a success simply because both the groom and the bride are Christians. Yes, you are righteous in the sight of God, but there are foundations that God has laid if we are going to have a successful marriage. And so again, like in every society, and indeed in our society today here in Britain, there are principles that undergird society today. There is the principle of democracy. We have the rule of law. There is individual rights, tolerance for people of other faiths and religion, etc. In the same way, marriage also is an ordinance that is instituted by God. It is the oldest institution known to man. Marriage is God's idea. Marriage is not the idea of Hollywood. Marriage is not the idea of any man. Marriage is the idea of God. And God has the blueprint for a successful, happy, productive, and enduring marriage. If the marriage that today you and I, you and Yao, have embarked upon, this journey that you have embarked upon, if it is going to be successful, then as I said to you during the counseling session, you need to understand that Jesus Christ has to be the center of your marriage. Amen. Amen. It also has to be according to the design of God. God's design, as we read from Genesis, is that marriage is between a man and a woman. We live in a society today where there is a lot of confusion as to who should get married. And if I say this today, I probably stand to be accused of being homophobic. And yet, I preach not from the books of men, but I preach from the word of the living God. Yes. And God said in his word that marriage is between a man and a woman. Yes, and marriage, for that matter, is between one man and one woman. Yes. Can I hear you say amen? Yes. Again, marriage has to be according to the purpose of God. Everything has a purpose. So what is the purpose of God for marriage? 
It is so that this man in the garden who the Bible says, God himself said, it is not good for the man to be alone. It wasn't man who said that God, the one who made man, said it is not good. Say to your neighbor, it is not good, is not good for, man for man to be alone. So man was given a helper comparable to him for the preservation also of mankind. I think the bishop said it in this house and he said it so well. That if we marry because we need somebody to cook our dinner for us, then we marry for the wrong reason. You should have bought yourself a microwave. <laughs> if you marry because you need somebody to wash your clothes for you, you marry for the wrong reason. You should have been acquainted with a washing machine. Marriage has to be for this very purpose, that God desires also godly offspring from us. And there is also an order that God requires in marriage. And so we'll look at that in the next few minutes, about a few of the principles that we cannot ignore. I've always said in this house that we are free to make all the choices that we want to make in life. But we need to understand that we are not free from the consequences of the choices that we make. So if we choose to work at our marriage, then we will have a successful marriage. No marriage becomes a success by accident. Our bishop will say that if you see that the grass is greener on the other side, you need to go and check their water bill. There is something they are doing which has made their grass so green on the other side. And a wonderful, sweet marriage is not by accident. It requires time and it requires effort. Can I hear you say amen? amen? So God made Adam and God made all the creatures that we hear about in the garden. And the interesting thing is the Bible says that God said that this man should not be alone. Years ago I heard the great late Dr. Miles Monroe as he preached on the subject of marriage. And he looked at the subject of this man whom God said it is not good for him to be alone. And he said this man was not just any ordinary man. To start with, he was in the Garden of Eden. Now Eden, we understand, was a portal. It was a place that was symbolized, or that symbolizes the presence of God. So the man that God said should not be alone was a man who knew how to be in the presence of God. If you are going to have a joyful marriage, you need to be a man who knows how to stay in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. He was a man who was busy working. God had given him a garden and given him instructions to work and to till. If a man doesn't have a job, he's not ready to marry. Because love alone will not sustain the marriage. Amen. You cannot go on love alone to keep a marriage happy. And so the man that God said should not be alone was a man who had a job. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen? Amen. So sisters, if the brother comes and he's proposing, ask him if he has got a J-O-B. If he hasn't got a job, then he needs to come back in the next couple of years. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, sisters, can you say amen? Amen. He's a man who was cultivating the garden. It means that he had the ability to bring out the best of his environment. Marriage means that you bring the best out of your bride. And so yeah, your child today is that you're going to bring the very best. Every word you speak to her, everything you do in the home should be to invoke the beauty that is in Cynthia. And you have a God-given responsibility to bring the best that is in her. And this was what Adam was doing. Adam knew how to protect. He knew how to guard the garden. And it was all these issues that made God say to him that this man, say to yourself, this man. This man. Not just any man, but this man should not be alone. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm happy to say that, yeah, you take all the right boxes. Hallelujah. Amen. And so you qualify, hallelujah, Amen. today to be married. Amen. Amen. So God made all the creatures, and the Bible says he called Adam and said, come and tell me the names of these animals. And it is wonderful to read that every animal that came to Adam, every name that he gave to them was their name. It tells me that Adam had the mind of God. Whatever name he said, that was the name of the animal. But after Adam had gone through all the animals that God had created, he found that there was not one animal that had the nature that he had. And so the Bible says, God 